Good morning, Sharon Danley here with Two Minute Tips Live. A shout out to everybody and an especial shout out to all those who are trying to overcome and going through some of the devastating natural things that are going on around the world with the fires and all kinds of things. My heart goes out to you all. Please keep safe. Um, I'm sending out prayers and I'm wishing for the best. Anyway, today... We're going to be talking about um, cleaning our makeup brushes. I've done a little bit of, of a video for you on how I clean mine and how often, what I use, and things of that nature. And then second aspect is a skincare. I've had many people ask me uh, why, you know, or what I do for my skincare. And here's the thing, guys. This is just makeup and, and not a lot of uh, products or anything. It's simple. It's easy. Anyway, I will, uh, I'm going to share that with you. And then, of course, we have our questions and answers. So let's get right into it, shall we? Brushes and makeup. Now, Sharon Frankel uh, uh, wanted to know how often I clean my brushes. Well, um, I explain a lot of this stuff in the video, but I, I find that every two to three weeks, uh, is pretty good. But when you're working every day or you're using makeup every day, then I'd say about once a week to clean your brushes and about once a month to clean out your bag. Um, I have, uh, I really like to use crown brushes because I find the price is right. I've used them for years. They wear well, and I'll put a link in the description box below for you. And, um, you know, that's just that's just my favorite kind. And you want to use short handled brushes because if you're using a magnifying mirror, then you're going to need short handles so that you can get in nice and close. OK, so um, I would say uh, let's get started with the video and then we'll have questions afterwards. Many have requested that I do a little demo on how I clean my brushes. So that's what I'm going to do, but I'm including my whole kit and caboodle little makeup bag. First of all, I carry everything in these tiny little Ziploc snack bags, I think they're called. And, you know, after about, oh, well, whenever they just don't look their best, I get rid of them and uh, use a new one. And I have four of them. I have two packages of lip colors and one for my eye uh, lashes and one for my brushes. So now I'm removing uh, some of the, I think it's the warm colors that I'm putting in to this new bag because I'm cleaning everything out. And I, do, I clean everything out, oh, about once a month or six weeks, something like that. And I find that keeping the warms and the cools separated just makes things a lot easier. And then everything that I need for my eyelashes or trimming them or anything like that goes into another one. It makes it really easy for having to grab what you need Need rather than fumbling a lot and I believe these are my red colored ones uh, yeah I know it seems like I have a lot but you have to remember I had quite a stash as a as a an artist so you know I'm kind of going through everything so then there's my warms and my cools separated so then I'm going to take out uh, my palette where I have all my colors in and I'm going to just take one of the brushes and add some alcohol to it so that I clean around all of the palettes or, or I'm sorry the pans within the palette and just you know kind of clean that all up make it nice and fresh I don't know there's something about nice fresh uh, pans that makes a real difference plus you know when you keep everything nice and clean like this I find that my uh, powders work much much better then I take a uh, another brush and just wipe off any excess of the alcohol and just finish doing that and make it all really nice and clean and fresh. And then I'm good to go. The palette's all nice and clean. Next. I'm going to just clean my little old, old, old mirror, as you can see, with a little alcohol and the same couple of paper towels 
that I was using and make that nice and clean. And then I have a couple of other things like my long handled uh, brushes I keep in the front because they're too long for the um, foundation brushes. And then I have uh, some eyeliner sealant, some gel liner, and of course my um, Shu Umera lash curler and I use alcohol to clean that off with too. Your lash curler should be cleaned regularly because if it's not, mascara can build up and tear your lashes out. So now I'm taking a wipe and I'm cleaning the inside of it, uh, the, the bag just for in case anything's you know spilled out or anything and I go over it with a bit of spray alcohol just for sanitary purposes so it's all really nice and clean. Get into any of the pockets that are there and um, make it really nice and pristine. Next, I'm pouring just a little bit of um, hand soap, actually, or hand gel on the, the side of my sink there, running the water. So I rinse the brush first, dip it in the soap, and then I just simply go around my finger like, like you're seeing, and I rinse it off, and then I squeeze out the excess nice and flat and lay it on the side of the counter. And I do that with all of these brushes. Now take note too how all of these brushes that I'm using except the two foundation brushes are short uh, handled because it makes it a lot easier to, to, to operate with and to store and that sort of thing. Now some of these brushes I have to tell you there's one there I've had for 30 years. So you know when you take good care of them they will wear really well for you. Uh, and this brush is missing the handle, but it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it really doesn't matter. So I squeeze that out. That's the one I use for my blush. And if I have a few because I use dedicated brushes for colors. And you can see the color that's coming off on the um, eyebrow and off the uh, flat edge dangled brush as well for the eyeliner. See how much is coming off? Well, I have to tell you, when your brushes are nice and clean, your, they perform so much better. Your uh, pans don't get all, you know, gunked up or, or become cakey. It's, you can see it's just not taking very long at all. I don't have a pile, and these are the only brushes I use. Um, I, you know, I have something for everything. I don't use them all every day, but if I need to with a couple of things I have in mind, I've got them there. And, uh, you know, that's another little detailed brush that I find comes in handy for a lot of things. And then uh, I have even a little mascara wand that I clean because I find that if I get too much eyeshadow on my eyebrows and I want to clean it off a little, I use this brush to do it. And it's a handy little brush to have in your bag for all kinds of things, actually. So uh, now I have uh, my Kabuki brush, which is pretty thick. It takes a little longer to dry, but you can see the color that's coming out of it. Wait till I rinse it off. You can see all of that color that's coming out. So it makes the brush nice and fresh. Squeeze it out and because that's a thicker brush I get the towel to absorb some of the moisture. Well I, then I just uh, you know put it into shape and let it sit. And then I have uh, my other dome brush. I didn't take the elastic off because well, I just didn't do it. And because it'll be fine it will dry just the way I need it. So then again, squeeze that out and take the excess because that's a little heavier, thicker brush. And then I do my sponge uh, that I use and it's discolored, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you just get all of that stuff out. And again, you can see it all coming out into the water as it's being rinsed out. It is discolored, but it still operates really well. And I will continue to use something as long as it's working well for me. I will keep using it until it doesn't anymore. And then when I finish squeezing it out, put it on the side of the counter. Now I'm going to sharpen the four little gel uh, pencils that I have. Uh, they're the Annabelle Smooth Line that I use to line my upper water line with. Sometimes I use the gel, sometimes I use the pencil. It just depends on the mood and what I'm aiming for. I, I use the actual gel if I want more um, drama and just sort of every day the pencil Pencil works really well, uh, but I can make it quite dramatic too if I heat it up.
uh, under the hot water tap before I apply it. So I'm just using my Quo, uh, what do you call that thing? A <laughs> pencil sharpener, right? And I sharpen them all up. And I do this because it's, uh, you know, when I'm cleaning everything out, I want to just make sure that everything's operating to its best and fullest advantage. And I do this probably about every six weeks where I clean everything out completely. But I do the brushes every couple of weeks, if I just do those by themselves. So I think this is the fourth one here. And then I uh, put them all in that little bag. I keep those with my brushes. Then I empty out my my pencil sharpener case, and I use that little uh, mascara wand to get the extra, you know, uh, lead. Out. Well, it's not lead; it's gel actually, um, because it's just it's a handy little thing to have. So then, and I like to put my pencil sharpener away clean. I don't like stuff sitting inside because you know what happens when it breaks open. So because I've used it for that, now I'm just going to clean it off with a little bit of a little bit more of the gel soap, and uh, rinse that off and squeeze it out and set it to the side of the sink, and dispose of everything that I need to. Then I'm going to put the pencils inside the bag and set the bag aside until uh, everything is dry with the brushes and then I'll put them in the bag later on. In the meantime, I'm going to put everything that I've cleaned back into the makeup bag. And notice it's a nice clear bag, so it's easy to grab what I need. I love having everything clear. It just makes life a whole lot easier. And this is a bag that I've got from Krylon. It's uh, it, I really love it. It does everything, and it sits upright. It doesn't fall over or anything. It's it's a wonderful bag, uh, and I think that there you can get those online. Now I put my longer handled brushes and my mascara and my little face razor in the front compartment there, and everything else goes in the back, all ready set. And uh, I'll just set that aside until my brush is dry. Okay, so now they are dry, and I'm just going to put them in the little bag alongside the pencils that I just sharpened. And I have all my brushes going the same way, too. I, you know, call me Sheldon Cooper, but I have to tell you, when you're grabbing for stuff and everything's going in the same direction, it makes life a lot easier. So that goes in the main part of the bag, and then those two foundation brushes go in the front because it has the space for them. And that's it! Many have requested that I... So, oh, many just have a second. <laughs> just a second here. I've made a little boo-boo there. Okay. So... Anyway, now I'm going to uh, see if uh, we have some comments here or anybody has any questions. Uh, hello, Hillary, 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 I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hi, Mary Ellen, nice to see you here. And Sue, um, thank you, Sue. The red, yes, well, you know, red and me go together. <laughs> Patty uh, Martin, nice simple way to clean brushes, uh, no expensive products to buy or clean or whatever. And Diane Swanson, using the spoolie brush to clean the sharpener is helpful. Thank you. Yes, um, I, uh, you know, when I was working professionally, I used to, uh, I used to carry uh, so clean, and there, were, I, you know, I used the Cinema Secrets, um, their brush cleaner, and I had some Mac brush cleaner and things of that nature. And I had it out on the counter with me because, you know, clients want to make sure that you're pristine and as they should and as you should be. But I have to tell you in my own life, it's not necessary. You know, soap is soap is soap. And um, I, I, there's no way I do that. And like I said, one of my brushes is 30 years old and some of the others are, you know, getting on you know, up in age too, just like I am. So it's not necessary. Uh, that soap is actually what I use uh, for uh, washing soap is, um, I like the body shop Satsuma. Um, it's a kind of an orange uh, citrus blend. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it or not, but I just love the scent of it. And that's what I use uh, to wash my hands with. 
and that sort of thing. So, and I wash my brushes with it. No need to oil them or anything else because it's just not necessary, in, in my opinion. And um, as I said to you, I like to use the crown brushes. Uh, a number of my brushes are crown brushes or Cinema Secrets brushes, uh, especially for detailed brushes. You want to have um, a synthetic, not a real hair like, uh, uh, you, you know, some of them are. I uh, it, Because when you're using creams or liquids or gels or anything of that nature, you don't want a, a true hairbrush. You want a synthetic brush. It's going to stand up much, much better. So anyway, that's it. Does anybody have any questions with respect to makeup brushes? Uh, would Dawn work? Let me see. Let me bring Sue up here. It would, but um, I, th well, actually, you make a, a really good point. If they can wash ducks, oil off of ducks, then why couldn't they wash your brushes? The trick is in cleaning, like with any other kind of cleaning, is to make sure that you rinse it really well, that there's no residue from any soap or cleansers left on your brush, and Squee and really rinse it, really squeeze it out well and push it back into the shape it came in and just set it aside and let it dry. That's that's the trick. That's all there is to it. So, yeah, I, I guess Dawn would. Like I said, <laughs> if they can clean little ducks with it, they can, cert they can certainly use it on your brushes. Okay, is there any other questions? Doesn't appear to be so... I think then what we'll do is move on to uh, the uh, face cleansing portion of our live stream for today. And again, uh, I've had, um, I think it was Mary Ellen that asked about my, my skincare uh, routine. So what I'm going to do is show another video on that very thing. And uh, let me just make sure I've got the right thing up here. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to disappear and let's watch the video. And it's my nighttime cleansing routine. First, I use a warm face cloth, as warm as I can stand it, actually. Rinse a couple of times to open the pores for cleansing. Then I'm going to use the Neutrogena All-in-One Face uh, Makeup Removing Cleansing Lotion. And I'm just going to spread it around my face and cleanse with my fingers only at this point, especially around the eyes because I'll be attending to the lips later. Work that all in. And then I'm going to add a little bit more to this Clairsonic clone and work that in as well if I can get it on there. <laughs> spread it around on the brush. And then the brush is geared for 10 seconds, I believe, uh, at each section of the face. And it has a little buzzing sound when it's finished that section. And I don't hold it really close to my face, but just enough to kind of deep cleanse. Now, I only do this twice a week. Any more than that is too much and too hard on the face, especially if you have a delicate skin or suffer from rosacea or anything like that. But I find if I just do this, you know, a couple of times a week that it works well. And I cover area, every area of my face except for my eyes, of course. Now, this is after I had my makeup on at 8 in the morning. This is now 1 o'clock. Uh, and, uh, you know, just working all day doing stuff. And I never touched my lipstick once. Yes, it's worn off, but it hasn't bled or anything up into the fine lines at all. It just wears away in the center. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse this off again with some warm, warm water, as warm as I can stand it, and wipe everything off with the face cloth a couple of times. Uh, and rinse clean, rinse, 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 and then I'm going to pat dry m with my towel. Just pat it dry, don't rub it. And then I'm going to apply for my eyes Nivea Q10 Anti-Wrinkle. Just a little dab on my finger, spread it with my other finger, and just massage it into my eyes uh, around the top and the bottom. 
And then I'm going to be using, I use the Reversa Anti-Spot Night Care. And alternatively, I use the Neutrogena Rapid Tone Repair Moisturizer. So tonight it's the Reversa. Tomorrow night it will be the Neutrogena. Put a little dab on and wipe it everywhere, massaging it in except for my eyes, of course. And this is an AHA. Neutrogena is a retinol. Now I'm going to attend to my lips by using just a simple little bit of Vaseline on a cotton bud or Q-tip. And I'm just wiping it over the um, Superstay lipstick and removing the excess that didn't come off with the cleanser. And then I just turn the Q-tip around a little more to get get more off. Uh, and then I use the other end of the Q-tip because there's enough Vaseline on my lips there to just wipe a couple of more times. And final wipe through. And if I don't get it all off, it ain't that big a deal. Then when I finished wiping it off, I just massage it in with the Vaseline that is right into the rest of my lips as a nighttime moisturizer. And then it's nighty night. And it's morning. Uh, the only thing that I do is I rinse my face with warm, warm water. Again, as, you know, as warm as I can stand it. And I do that, you know, a couple, maybe three times, depending. And I don't rub, I just, just let the water soak in and that's all I use absolutely nothing else and then I just pat my face dry notice I don't rub anything and then I have a choice of three either Neutrogena sunblock that I use if I'm going out or on my gym days I use the Aveeno that's packed in my bag which also has an SPF or I use Olay Total 7 Effects so then I just put a little bit on my uh, the pad of my fingers and rub my hands together and apply just gently everywhere. Uh, and uh, that's all really that I need. I just put it everywhere, let it soak in and do its thing, and I'm done. And that's it. Simple and easy. Oh, little white spot there. That's okay. I'm sure I got rid of it. So that's how fast and easy and simple and effective it is. So, there we go with uh, the face cleansing. Uh, let me just check and see if we have any questions about that. I hope that that was, uh, that was helpful. Um, uh, that's all that I do. Uh, it, it's not necessary, I find, to get so caught up in a lot of different lotions and potions and things. If you cleanse your face every single night, uh, I mean every single night, and, and rinse it thoroughly in the morning, protect your skin in the sun, then you should have, you know, no problems. Uh, w w and your skin should, should wear well. Okay, let's see. We have a comment from Patty here. Whoops, let me just see if I can uh, shorten this up a little bit, Patty. Uh, I'm having little trouble here okay okay patty says i love the 24 super eight stay too i use blistex chapsticks ah, to remove the lipstick takes off even the darkest color i am sure chapstick works too oh no 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 sorry patty i have to tell you i have been a strong advocate against chapstick for years I could always tell when somebody came into the makeup room, I could tell by looking at them, those that used chapstick and those that didn't. There's something in that product that, uh, that dries out the skin, that, um, that causes a redness to the, to the lips. Don't, don't use it, please don't. Uh, do an experiment, would you? Try Vaseline for a week and see how you like it. Because the thing with the Vaseline is it will remove it, um, but it's also giving a layer of protection. And people who have changed from chapstick to Vaseline swear they will never go back. And also you can put a little bit of Vaseline on your um, 
cuticles at night too, and it will, uh, it will, um, what? It'll soften them. It will keep them supple so that they're always in good shape. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see what Sue Silva has to say. Um, just having a little trouble moving these around a bit. Uh, which Neutrogena sunscreen was that? My sunscreen is very shiny. I'm using, I'll put it right up here for you. It's the Ultra Sheer sunscreen, 60. What I like about it is that it um, it is sheer. It doesn't have that uh, that oily, oily feeling to it. And I can put that on like you would with your moisturizer. Wait, uh, you know, uh, two or three minutes. Then you can put your dual finish powder on over top. And guess what? Your, your, your foundation makeup doesn't melt or anything else. And, and what you will get because of the titanium dioxide in sunscreens is that it will it will kind of bleed through a little bit to give a glow you know that that sheen that glow look that that there is if you don't like it take a kleenex and just blot okay so yeah anyway i i hope that that helps i'm going to put these in the description box below too and Patty says, uh, Martin, I will try the Vaseline, Sharon. You're welcome, Patty, and mwah, good luck with it. I think that you will like it uh, much better. And Mary Ellen says, do you recommend a moisturizer for dry uh, skin for daytime? Because I don't have dry skin and because I'm not a skincare expert, I don't have anything off the top of my head except that uh, I, f I think that the Aveeno seems to be pretty good. If you have extremely dry skin, then you check with your dermatologist about that, Mary Ellen, um, and, and check your diet too. When a diet has enough oils in it, because we do need oils, like olive oil and coconut oil, the healthy oils, not, you know, the saturated fats or anything, you'll find that your skin reflects that you know i uh, uh now my my face is my face is kind of normal it could be dry if i if i didn't moisturize it i know that but i find that what i use seems to work well um uh you know what i would suggest you do is go to paula's choice it's online that's paula begoin uh she's a researcher with respect to all of the lotions and potions with respect to skin care. She's well researched and she has a number of products she sells too. She didn't used to, but she does now. And, um, and I would go there and they have um, people that you can talk to online describing what your skin is like and they'll be happy to help uh, and recommend products for you. So that would be my, my suggestion, Mary Ellen. And let's see, uh, let me see, Diana Swanson, I like using uh, micular water before cleansing to remove waterproof mascara. Well, thank you, Diana. I'm not sure what that is, but um, I'm going to say something about the waterproof mascara. Not something you should be wearing daily. It's not, it's not good. Uh, it's really not good. Waterproof should only be reserved for special occasions, like weddings when you know you're going to cry, or a special event. It's really not, it's really not a smart thing to use, and I don't recommend it to anybody. I don't wear it myself. That's why I do recommend the, um, the Blink used to be called Kiss, but the Blink, I like the tube mascaras. Now, what you could do is you could put a tube mascara on first so that it kind of wraps around each hair and then put a waterproof from the middle to the end out so that it's not touching your lashes. Waterproof mascara 
is hard on lashes, especially as we get older. So, so try a tube mascara first and, and then your, your waterproof over top of that. And the one thing that I love about tube mascara is that it curls and it wears, uh, as good as waterproof. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, what do you call it? Uh, not melt is not the right word I'm looking for, but you know, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. It doesn't move around or anything like that. Now today I've got on just mascara, and it's and I only wear the blink. Now there are other tube mascaras, and I think in our going gray page we have it. Uh, I listed, and I'll take a look. Uh, now, that, see, this is this is the old blink. It's the kiss me, um, you know, because I have a stash from years ago. So, um, please try that, and um, yeah, and 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 only reserve your waterproof mascara for special occasions. Okay, does that does that help? Is there any other questions with respect to the skincare? All right, there doesn't seem to be. So I'm going to move on then to uh, questions that we have uh, from uh, from um, sports fans out there. And the first question is from Joanne Chandler. Um, Love your makeup advice for our faces. Um, any help for legs? I have scars on my legs and bad circulation has caused scarring on my shins. A status uh, dermatitis. Yes, uh, I, I, I do. I, I would recommend Dermablend, and I've got the link there for you, and I'll put it in the description box below. Dermablend, and then there is Cinema Secrets, and then there's Dermacol, a new product out. What these are are, are heavy, heavy camouflage. Now, I have to tell you, when I want to look my best, and if I'm wearing crop pants in the summer or whatever, I'll, you, I've got Dermablend body uh, product that I use around my ankles. They're not very bad, but, you know, it just makes them look like brand new, so to speak. And, uh, you know, moisturize, wait till the moisturizer, uh, you know, uh, soaks in a bit put it on, spread it, make sure it's nice and smooth. And then with all these products, you use a fixing powder. Now, fixing powder is like a white powder that's a finishing product that you put on over top that waterproofs it so that you can go swimming. You can also use it on your forearms, your decollete, or if you have a spot or whatever on your face where you need to cover it and the, the regular stuff isn't doing it, any one of these three products will work very well to help with that. Now, the Dermacol is a new uh, product and it's getting really good reviews. Plus, you see, all of the, these three products, too, will also cover tattoos. Now, if they cover tattoos, they'll cover anything absolutely anything. So um, as I said, I will put these in the description box for you, uh, Joanne, and uh, you know, we'll go from there. Now, Cindy Pearson, uh, she has a very dry skin. I have no spritz water available. So I use a very cold washcloth, wrung out to almost dry, place it on top of my face and just press down lightly. This works well for me. That's an excellent tip, Cindy. Uh, and for hot, hot weather, yes, if you took a face cloth, run it under really cold water, wring it really tight, just press it into your face. Remember, press, don't drag. And th that's that's that will keep you cool and sets the dual powder uh, foundation really well as well. Thank you for that, Cindy. Nancy Duckles, uh, she says that 10 minutes of sun will give you the vitamin D you need in our discussion last week about that. Uh, that's good to know, uh, Nancy. Thank you for sharing that. And Sue Silva, can you wear sunscreen under the dual finish powder? Absolutely. I do it all the time, all the time. And we have, I believe you would call this Quilt Bug J. I'm wondering approximately how many months use of the Mac should expect based on daily use. Well, I would say two to three months, depending on how you use it. 
The pans that I use of the Burrell, and they're kind of, you know, about the same as far as um, uh, uh, content is concerned. A pan lasts me, and I wear makeup probably mm, three to four days a week. So a pan will last me about three months. So I hope that that, that helps your, your, uh, your question. And then a vet Roman, uh, how do you, what do you do when you have veiny legs? Should you cover them? Thanks, Yvette. The thing that I just mentioned for Joanne Chandler is the same thing. Whether it's veins or it's sunspots or it's scars or it's discoloration, pigment, whatever. Those three products, the Derma Blend, the Armacol, and the Cinema Secrets are all really good for the extra coverage that's needed for those things. Okay, let's see if we have any other uh, questions or comments here. I always, as always, I will see this video several times. Thanks. Well, that's good. I'm glad. And my name is Hillary in English, Hilaria in Spanish. Well, thank you for that clarification. Um, Hilaria. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, let me see. Um, who else do we have here? Mary Ellen. Uh, Mary Ellen says, thank you. Uh, Linda. Okay. So. Do we have any other questions here? I can't see any. So, that being the case, if you, if you do uh, have questions later or you're looking for anything, make sure to check in the description box below because everything that's talked on a video and the makeup I'm wearing is in, will be in the description box below the video. And on the page, uh, you can uh, go into the search box that's marked there for any particular thing you're looking for, or you can click on the playlists and then uh, find whatever playlist you want at categories. They're broken down into similar categories where you can find things. Okay, for this week's quote, beauty psychotherapy, repair of the physical is a rejuvenation of the spirit. Okay, so I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, and that being the case, I think we'll, uh, we'll just... Um, close this down. And remember, if you have any uh, questions uh, that I haven't answered, or you can think of something afterwards, just put them in the comments below, and I will gather them up and certainly answer them for you uh, the next time that we have our, our live, which is in two weeks time. Now next week, I've got a video of a makeover for a mother of the bride whose daughter is getting married this September. So, uh, and I did it in a way because she's doing her own makeup. So I did it in a way so that, she, you know, she would do it for herself. So anyway, look forward to that next Friday and two weeks from Saturday, we'll be back live at 11. We'll see you next time. <laughs>